everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Pinch. Today we're here in front of St. Mark's Church talking to Adam Horowitz. Unfortunately, not the Beastie Boy Adam Horowitz. Not that one. But uh, the one who started a new enterprise, the U.S. Department of Arts and Culture. So, Adam, you want to tell us a little bit about what's uh, Yeah, what's yeah. U.S. Department of Arts and Culture is, is not a federal entity, alas, or good, depending on your point of view. We're a people-powered department. So, you know, as you often hear, U.S. spends more on military bans than they do on the NEA. You know, we spend twice as much on war every day than the annual budget for the NEA. What are our priorities here, and how do we begin to shift them? So we decided we'd invent this entity. We'd killing, imagine Killing it. people and dominating stuff, that would be the priority. Yeah. yeah. Do we want to be remembered as the great punishers of the world, or a great creative bunch of folks? So you're saying we should take all that military budget and just give it to the arts? This is not... You know, it's not an advocacy campaign okay. to create an actual Department of Arts and Culture. We're trying to imagine what kinds of values would animate it and how we can start to do it ourselves. Nice. But yes, we should take that money and. And so you're saying that it it's like an arts. emergent kind of a thing. You're creating like a network, like people. Exactly. What exactly. What do you call them? When they... We have cultural agents and citizen artists all across the country. Cool. Right. So we're, we're this is a large scale performance and organizing project. If I was wearing my tie today, I would be the uh, Deputy Secretary Norman Beckett, but I'm just Adam today. But we invite people to step up and play these roles. So we have cultural agents. So it's kind of like what Joseph Boys would call like a social sculpture? It's a social sculpture nice. with the fundamental value of everyone is an artist. Okay. Culture is created by everyone, and it's up to us to inhabit that, that agency that we have and enact it. So if I'm a cultural agent, then yes. what do I do on a day-to-day -day basis? So, cultural agent, this is an all-volunteer network, but people have put off amazing things already. Uh, cultural agents have been hosting these events called Imaginings. So they bring together their community to imagine the year 2034, using the arts in a variety of ways to, to have this kind of facilitated dialogue, to imagine the year 2034, when missions accomplished for the USDAC. What does that look like? And how do we get there? What's the what's the best uh, one you've heard so far? We get these applications all the time to be agents, and the visions, whether you know whether it's the head of a major organization or it's really the outsider artist in a small town in the Midwest, the there's a remarkable similarity with these visions. Thinking about public spaces in which we can you know we can be together, we can connect, we have a deep moment of encounter without commerce taking part of it. There's music, you know. Everyone describes the murals on the walls, um, but really, a lot of people are imagining a return to what, what sounds like a village, a, a colorful village in which capitalism is not the way that we meet each other. So, I mean, do you kind of see yourself trying to become some kind of like emperor or cultural czar who's like controlling the discourse around art in this society? Not at all. Oh, okay. That's why it's the deputy secretary. There is no secretary. Okay. We can all. And what title would you like in the department? Uh, secretary. Oh! <laughs> well, Secretary of... Um, visionary uh, Capacity. That's it. So that, that can be yours. Um, no, we're not here to make a judgment call of what is art and what is not. We recognize that there's a wide, wide so spectrum. So art can just be anything. Like, if I just step on a piece of paper, I'm like, that's art. You can call that art. But I think what we're seeing right now is a moment in which there is a shift uh, so there's, there's one guy who talks about the spectrum of from studio art to social art to civic art, right? And, you know, here in New York, we mostly see the studio art. I think this is a moment in which there's a, there are a lot of people hungry to make that shift to social and civic art, in which the art is not the thing that hangs on the wall, but it's the way that we imagine a new society together. Right, so, okay, so the art doesn't become just a thing, like an artifact that sits in a museum, it's more about the process by which we change and transform our society to align with our highest dreams? That's exactly it. Oh, okay, got it. I've been thinking oh, of... Silence. <laughs> art? I don't know. Um, I've been thinking a lot about Grace Lee Boggs recently. She's this amazing Ameri uh, Chinese American activist. She's 99 years old, and I was reading a quote that she had. How's her jump shot? <laughs> it's huge in spirit. Cool. Huge in spirit. Um, two months ago, she's in hospice care, and at age 99, she said, uh, "A revolution based on people exercising their creativity in the face of devastation is the greatest contribution of humankind." Oh. At age 99, and that feels like a real true statement, and that's that's the vehicle that we're trying to build is a, is a container and a catalyst for creativity in the service of social justice. Well, Adam, thank you so much for uh, sharing this time with us. Totally. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Pinch. And for our secretary of visionary something or other, we got your new badge. <laughs> Welcome to the department.